but this uh, next topic, man, was more of a league topic, man. But um, Debo Samuel, um, <laughs> <laughs> he made the headlines everywhere yesterday when it became official that you know he had requested the uh, his brother trade tried telling of, everyone. Uh, you're you're right. Facebook. You're definitely <laughs> right. <laughs> you are definitely right. Brother did try to drop the news ahead of time. But uh, yeah, it's official that uh, Debo Samuel has requested a trade. That was uh, reported by Jeff Darlington as well. Same guy that talked about the whole Baker Mayfield to the Steelers situation. Um, and obviously, everybody got the talking. Debo Samuel. Available. What's his price point? How much do we want him? Would you want him in Pittsburgh? And I was like, man, Deke, you know. We were just talking about this wide receiver situation of, you know, we having one guy who, even though he hasn't directly said it, you know, he is a little disgruntled. He wants his, his money as well. But Debo Samuel, what's your interest level in this in this dude, man? And, and Mr. Debo, Mr. All Pro Receiver, Mr. Do It All, postseason playmaker, might I add. Not much. Not much at all. Mm -hmm. Because... He had all this, that success. There's a couple of reasons. He had all that success. Because he had that dope quarterback, man. Talk about it. Who was the quarterback? No, not Who's because the, of Jimmy Come G. on, man. Who was the quarterback, man? I will say this, though. If it was Trey Lance's rookie year, yeah, maybe Debo Samuel doesn't have the same production. So uh -huh, maybe you could give uh -huh. some credit to Jimmy G. Come on, Jimmy G for president. Let's get it. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't but say that. But he had a really nice system <laughs> with Kyle Shanahan that featured him. Yeah. I don't know if trading for him solves all of our issues here when we have Matt Canada as coordinator. Mm -hmm. He's he's got to prove himself first. Yeah. To be able to run a nice like NFL system. Mm -hmm. To be able to uti utilize stars in unique ways. I don't know if we have that in Canada. I don't know how much of a difference mm -hmm. it makes bringing Debo Samuels in. Then but, we got to pay him. That's the other thing. Correct. Too. But when did Debo fit the Mac? I Canada think it would. Well, I told you. Perfectly? I told you about Traylon yeah. Burks. I mean, uh -huh. if we're gonna comp Traylon Burks to Debo. It would make sense. But the next part of it, though, yeah. is now we got to pay him. And you got to trade for him. He's you got to trade, cost. what, at least at least a first round pick. He is going. If Devontae Adams, what was it, a first? How many was it for Devontae? Devontae was what? One, was it one first? It was a first of. Because they had to pay Let me him double after check. that. I want to say it was a first and a third, maybe? I don't know. Check that out. Yeah. I want to say it was just the first, but we'll, we'll just say we, we're going to have to trade at least yeah. the first round pick, maybe even a little bit more for Debo. And, and, and then we got to fork up the money. How much you pay? Because he want what? He's 25 gonna, or 30? He's going to at least want 25. He's got to be. Yeah, he definitely wants 25. So if we're talking Ew. about Deontay Johnson and our hesitancy to pay mm -hmm. him $15 million, but we're just going to go ahead and trade for Debo Samuel yeah. like that and pay him 25. And this was. I think this even goes back to mm -hmm. the hesitancy to trade for any receiver, like DK Metcalf. Yeah. Although, man, DK, I just feel like he's on a different level. But anyway, with Debo Samuel, the the, the production isn't even like if you actually look at this, uh -huh. the production isn't that crazy different from Deontay Johnson. He but fit you're, a different But you're role. talking solely wide receiver. Right. Correct. You're not talking full That's body fair, of what he does. You're right. Because the that is running the back, all element. that type of stuff. Absolutely. That's a fair point. But just receiver-wise, mm -hmm. 77 catches, yeah. 1,400, six touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Deontay, 107 catches, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. And how about this one? Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're getting this stat, but oh, Debo yeah, Samuel, 8% yeah, yeah, yeah. drop rate. Deontay that. Johnson, 3% drop rate. So, so some of those stats are actually in Deontay's favor. But you're right. But, Debo brings a but, lot but more but to the But think about table. this, though. Deontay is a full-time wide receiver, 30 more catches, and 400 yards less receiving. Whereas with Debo, 77 catches. So, like I said, 30 less catches, but still out yardage him. And he You're doesn't right. even play receiver exclusively. You're right. That's all. I just think, like, we're telling, like, just a portion of the story when we only look at his receiver numbers. Because, as we saw last year, he does so much more than just play receiver. No, you're 100% right. But yeah. the question is, is he... Well, I don't even know if 15 million is enough for Deontay now, but let's just say Deontay 15, Debo at 25, just to make it easy, because right. Debo might even want more than 25. So it ends up being Deontay mm -hmm. at 18, Debo at like 28. But anyway, yeah. is it worth the $10 million difference between Deontay and Debo plus a couple high quality picks? <sighs> well, I mean, this is the thing the high quality picks are because you're getting a proven guy, whereas a rookie is a crapshoot. 
a rookie, it could be like Claypool. Look, really good year one. Then it's kind of like, man, expectations kind of fell off a little bit in year two. And now we're kind of hoping that it can rebound to be a lot more consistent. Whereas when you give up the draft picks, you're saying, hey, man, I'm paying you for this proven commodity. I don't want to take the guest game in the crap. I don't want to play the the, the crap shoot. I want to get me what I know is going to work. And that's why it's like I don't necessarily get hung up on the draft pick part. For me, it's the money part. So just officially with Devontae Adams, first and second round picks. That's what, okay. But I knew it was two of them. Jones. In 2022, okay. this year. Yeah, that's my only thing, man. It's like. You were saying something. What did you say? It's, it's more so the money. I'm, I'm hung up on the money part because to me, Debo's style of play. If he's just at receiver, I mean, the receiver numbers alone, I mean, 1,500 yards or 1,400 yards for him. Dude, 1,400 yard receiving season is still a good, that's a dope season. That's unreal. That's yeah. a dope season. And you're telling me he did that with less than 100 catches, 77 catches. So I'm like, well, what if he did get 100 catches? What if he did get more targets exclusively at receiver? What does that look like? And that's the part that makes it even more intriguing. But once again, I think of what you said, Kyle Shanahan versus Matt Canada. We joke about, hey, this fits the Matt Canada offense, but none of us really can say, hey, you know what? This is the Matt Canada outside of the jet sweep. We can't really point to something and say, you know what? This is his proven niche. This works. Whereas with Kyle Shanahan, we've seen him do this multiple times now with different people. He is, this is where he specializes in. You know what I mean? So to see. Yeah, if we had like, I don't even know who the hot offensive coordinator is these days or the guy that's under uh, McVay or right, Shanahan. Or, if we had them in place, or somebody then like yeah. That. Yeah, it changes a lot because you feel like they can get the most out of that guy. And I don't um No, no, I did see this yesterday as well. Debo, I know he was saying that he wants to just play receiver too. He wants to kind of get away from doing all the gadget stuff. I did see I that. I don't like that. I don't either per se, but I think what Mika said, when Mika first got here, what did he say? I don't want to move around as much. What do we do with Mika now? Move him around? So it's kind of like, all right, you might be saying that, but then you get here and realize, all right, man, it'll work. I can still do that type of stuff. So like I said, man, the biggest thing though for Debo is just with the money, I want to know, I want it to be that perfect fit. And my biggest hangup is, like I said, we got Matt Canada. I don't know if he's going to utilize him to that extent. And now if he's not utilized to that extent, now I'm looking at him getting 25 plus, I don't have my top draft pick or picks as well. And I just feel like it was a bad situation. So that's why, for me, I would say no to the Debo trade, man. Do you think it's even the 25 to his archetype at the position that you're uncomfortable with, too? Because even yeah, when I brought up DK Metcalf, I'm like, I, don't, I wouldn't feel as bad paying DK Metcalf. Yeah. Even though he hasn't had a season to Debo's level. Correct. Although his second year his second year was crazy. Yeah. It was probably pretty close, but he doesn't have the mm. versatility that Debo was providing right. last year. But DK's, I mean, DK's second year was up there. I, I yeah. think I would be more apt to pay DK. Just because he's that wide receiver one prototype. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas like Debo oh, long term. Debo I, still had, what he had what, eight, eight on the ground? Eight touches on the ground. Mick Ball, bro. He's, he's cool. more versatile. I, Oh, DK versus do you, Debo. Do you see Debo holding up long term like That's that? That's the though? part that I don't know. Whereas DK, I think DK could still be ascending. I, I would that might have been Debo's best season. I would I agree. That that is a hang up for me. That is something that I'm concerned about. <sighs> yeah, because I didn't feel this way whenever we were talking about trading for DK. I, I didn't just don't feel like as the like, glory nah, drops though with DK. Like DK gonna ball, but DK gonna drop someone that's gonna make us just wanna throw up in our mouths. We've seen that. You even talked about it. You was like, yo, he's wide open. He has those T.O. drops. And he just, that that's a great way to call it. T.O. Yeah. drops. Yeah. And how often is our, because we don't have Russ. So it's like, man, that might have been our only, you know, our quarterbacks have been going to some games like, yo, I think they got three dope deep ball passes. All right. You can't drop these. Okay. And what if that was one of those ones? We sick. He does have some big plays yeah. to make up for it though. Yeah. Well, you know what? The way it makes sense is we trade Deontay for Debo. But we're still paying him. That's the problem. Yeah, you still got to pay him. That's yeah. the problem. But you're going to have to pay receivers at some point here for for our team, whether it's Deontay, Claypool. You don't have to have to, but... You got options. You got time. You low-key got time. You're going to you're gonna have to. You're going to come to that decision one way or another, yeah. whether you pay him, trade him, or play him, right? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. I, I see you a little foreshadowing. Yeah. Hey. But that's definitely, you know. So like, you could trade Deontay for Debo. Uh, I think that that's actually a fair trade. Deontay for Debo. 
If it was gonna and, be straight and we, up, and we give but him a pick or something, straight up. We you gotta him like give a third him a pick. pick, and then after we gotta pay third. him. So now I still feel like, oh, I don't like this all the way. Unless the Deontay trade makes it where you don't have to give up, you know, as high of a pick. Yeah, right. Yeah. Deontay in a second, Deontay in a third. I said like as high of a pick. You said second. I'm like, dude. Well, you don't have to give up the first. Deontay's <laughs> the first. Yeah. I like the clay pool and like second for DK better than Deontay. I would. You get well. what I mean? Then you have I DK and Deontay. Well. I definitely would as well. That's not bad. I definitely would as well. But then you still got to decide on if you're going to pay Deontay or not. I know. Because you could you then imagine, we just draft a guy in the first say, round. Could you imagine if Deontay is like this right now? If we traded for DK and pay DK before paying Deontay, come on, man. Well, there's multiple series out there. Should we trade for AJ Brown? <laughs> Who else? Who else is this? All I'm saying is like four or five guys. If you bring one of these dudes in and pay them before you pay Deontay, I think that causes more of a ruckus than if we just told them we're gonna not pay you until after the season. You're right. Because it's like, bro, I'm homegrown. You drafted me, and you're not gonna cut the check for me, but you'll get this dude from around the corner, and he just showed up here. Now you want to give him the ring? And Deontay, come on, bro. Off the top of my head, arguably had a better season than DK last year. Listen, listen, bro. Not in total for that's, their careers, but just last year. That's a tough one to deal with. That's a tough one to deal with, baby. Let me see what DK did last year real quick. What's your projections? For who? Oh, yeah. Ah, he had 12 touchdowns, though. But, bro, he also had Geno Smith and... Um, yeah, yeah, Geno. Wasn't there another quarterback to play for them, too? At one point? No, no, it might have just been Geno. Geno and the Russ. Duration, yeah. And Russ when he came back, yeah. Yeah, he had uh, 967 yards, 12 yeah. touchdowns. That's... That's equal, if not better, than Deontay. I mean, the yeah. 12 touchdowns, that's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to, what was his yards per catch? Mm. So he had 75 receptions for 967. Mm. Yards per game, 56. Yards per target, how's that? Sure. 7.5. Okay. I'm telling you, his second year, though, the 2020. Yeah. 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, 83 receptions, 10.1 yards per target. Yeah, so like he was more downfield. Right? That's what I was trying to trying to get to. Yeah, he's up there, man. I mean, rookie year yeah. two, 900 yards, seven touchdowns. He's legit. Yeah. I wouldn't mind trading for DK. <sighs> I like the DK. I, I, I would definitely be down for DK. But it would just have to make sense, man. I, I don't know how that – I don't know how we pull that off. Claypool would have to be in the deal. Yeah. Like I said, I just don't see how Deontay enjoys that season if he doesn't get checked. If he don't get but that check before I think we're man. good where we're at. Like, we don't have to make any of these crazy moves because yeah. we get another year of Claypool on a cheap rookie contract. Yep. And we do have the leverage with Deontay where he is still on that rookie contract. It's just yep. who knows how it's going to play out. But we have another year of two really good receivers mm-hmm. on affordable deals. I don't think we have to make any crazy moves right now. Yeah. So, because Claypool could emerge, I mean, he could he could no, have he a 1,200, 1,300 yard could. season this year, and, and that's the thing. And that's like we do believe he's capable of that. It yep. wouldn't surprise any of us. We just feel like he has to take that next step of being more consistent, and that's just the biggest difference between him being a good player to tapping into that great player category. Because he's definitely shown the the potential for that, man. Yeah, 